Hi friends, welcome back. We're gonna keep reading Leon and the Spitting Image by Alan Kurzweil. Remember, I don't own the copyright to this book. We're just reading it together for educational purposes. So the last time we read, Leon had started using his new magic powers to control Miss Hagmeyer, and he ended up starting a food fight between the teachers in the cafeteria. So we're gonna see what happens next when we pick back up at chapter 19, Interference. No sooner had the last of the carrots landed than the first of the rumors took off. Everyone was talking about the food fight. Mr. Hankley, the janitor, turned out to be the angriest commentator on the subject. He roamed the halls mop in hand, grumbling and telling anyone who'd listen, next time my lunchroom gets turned into a launch room, I'm quitting. You can count on that. Principal Birdwhistle expressed her disappointment and outrage differently. She posted a memo. Everyone ignored it. People were too busy trying to find out who had started the fight. No one seemed to know for sure. Some thought it was Mr. Groot. Others placed the brame squarely on the wig-topped head of Miss Hagmeyer since she'd been acting weird all week. A third contingent of rumor mongers attributed the food fight to the coach, the ex-pitcher known for his fastball. No one suspected the three fourth graders who met behind the maple tree that same afternoon. What's the raincoat for? Lily Matisse asked PW. The sky was slightly overcast, but the chances of rain seemed slim. PW slipped a hand inside his slicker. He withdrew a folded sheet of graph paper and a pencil. Another invention, said Lily Matisse. No, said P.W., mildly irritated. He handed the sheet to Leon, who eagerly opened it. A map? P.W. nodded. What's a proving ground? Lily Matisse asked, pointing to the title that ran across the top of the sketch. That's the phrase NASA uses for testing facilities, said P.W. Actually, I think it's spelled, the map is a, the map is of the playground, right? Leon said quickly, cutting in before Lily Matisse could correct P.W.'s spelling. Affirmative, said P.W. See, this is where we're standing at right now. And that right there, that's the teacher's bench. And there's the jungle gym and the jump rope area. PW's finger darted about. I drew the map on graph paper so we can plot test results on a grid. It'll make it easier to mark the exact range of the doll's power. How do you want to start? Leon asked. First, we have to pace out distances, said PW. You check how far it is from here to the jungle gym. I'll do the same to the jump ropers. He took a couple of long steps to show Leon the standard unit of measure. What about me? said Lily Matisse. Think you can pace off the distance from the teacher's bench? Of course, said Lily Matisse. It was her turn to feel annoyed. The three surveyors parted company and reassembled a few minutes later to share results. 47 paces from the jungle gym to here, said Leon. 24 from the bench, noted Lily Matisse. By the way, the hag's grading our spelling quizzes. How do you know? Leon asked. I saw when I was measuring. Guys, can we stay focused, said PW. It's 38 paces from the jump ropers. So figuring three feet per pace, he scribbled a few numbers on the map and drew some dotted lines. What's next, Magellan, said Lily Matisse. We'll start our tests here, PW said, tapping a spot on the map, and move in a few paces at a time. Leon eased the masterpiece from the pouch and glanced around to see if anyone was looking. All clear? All clear, PW confirmed. Leon took a beat on Miss Hagmeyer. She was hunched over a stack of paper. He aimed the doll and slowly lifted one of its arms. Nothing happened. PW scribbled some notes on the map. We're too far away, he said moving three paces closer to where Miss Hagmeyer was seated. Try here. Leon joined him at the new spot and again flexed the doll. Still nothing, said Lily Matisse. PW added the new data to the map and continued to close in. After four moves and four tests, Lily Matisse said, I think I saw her twitch. Leon leaned forward and jiggled the doll. Miss Hagmeyer noticeably wiggled her bony rump. We have liftoff, PW said in an excited whisper. He made further notations before turning to Leon. Okay, here's the scoop, he said quietly. By my calculations, you can't be more than about 30 or 35 feet away from the hag. Beyond that, she stops responding. So now what? Asked Leon. PW again reached into his raincoat. This time he pulled out the black toucan feather he had picked up at the Trimore. He brushed it under Lily Matisse's chin. Stop that, it tickles, she complained. It's supposed to, said PW. How else can Leon wage a tickle attack? Leon's eyes widened. You mean on the hag? Of course on the hag, said PW. You'd better be careful, Lily Matisse warned. You don't know how she'll react. That's the whole point, PW said. Leon took a deep breath and brought the toucan feather against the parts of the doll he guessed would cause the most squirming. Under the arms, behind the neck. She's not giggling, said Lily Matisse. PW gave a nod. I bet you the masterpiece can make the hag move, but it can't make her feel. Makes sense, said Leon. Doll work definitely numbs her. That would also explain why she has no memory about the stuff she's made to do, PW said. He reclaimed the toucan feather and stuck it back inside his slicker. Time to see if the masterpiece works through walls. He pointed to a recessed doorway on the map. Leon, hide here and see if you can get the hag to do a couple jumping jacks through the wall. Leon trotted off to the spot PW had selected. 
After flexing the doll so its legs parted and its hands touched overhead, Leon glanced at the teacher's bench to see if blind doll work prompted Miss Hagmire to do jumping jacks. P.W. gave him a thumbs down. The news comforted Leon. He no longer had to worry about crushing Miss Hagmire unknowingly because of something he accidentally did to the doll. Lily Matisse dashed over to the doorway with another piece of P.W.'s testing equipment. Einstein wants to see if this will work, she told Leon. He looked at the object in her hand. A mirror? I'm supposed to hold it up and you're supposed to aim the doll at it, Lily Matisse explained. P.W. thinks catching the hag in the reflection might extend the doll's range. You mean like one of those cardboard periscope things, said Leon. I guess it's worth a try. Lily Matisse ran off to a spot halfway between the recess door and the bench. She pressed the mirror against her chest and moved it back and forth until Leon could see Miss Hagmire in the reflection. Lining up a bank shot off a mirror was harder than Leon imagined. The slightest movement by him or by Lily Matisse jiggled Miss Hagmire out of view. Eventually, he managed to complete a couple of tests, which again turned out negative. P.W. and Lily Matisse joined Leon to go over the results. The mirror test proves you can't extend or bend the signal, said P.W. scientifically. I guess doll work needs a straight shot, said Leon. That might make my next test a little tough, said P.W. with a cryptic grin. Okay, I'll bite. What's the next test? asked Lily Matisse. P.W. scrounged around in the pocket of his raincoat and pulled out a pair of pantyhose. Either of you see Lumpkin? he asked. You're kidding, said Leon. He understood immediately what P.W. had in mind. You want the hag to crown him? We never did get the chance to execute plan A, P.W. noted with barely suppressed delight. This is not a good idea, warned Lily Matisse. Besides, how will you get Lumpkin and the hag together? Mr. Dabandana. Out of nowhere, Miss Hagmire appeared. Y yes, P.W. stammered as he shoved the pantyhose and map under his slicker. Come with me. Lily Matisse and Leon watched helplessly as Miss Hagmire marched P.W. to the teacher's bench, where she flapped a test paper at him accusingly. Sorry, guys, P.W. said dejectly, dejectedly when he rejoined his friends. Plan A will have to wait. The hag is pulling me out of recess. I have to go over my spelling. That's totally unfair, Lily Matisse protested. Can't you stay for a few more minutes, said Leon. No, he cannot, Miss Hagmire shouted from the bench. After P.W. had headed back to the classroom, Lily Matisse and Leon ducked into the doorway. So now what, said Lily Matisse. Leon shrugged. Running tests without P.W. didn't feel right. It stinks big time he gets punished just because he's bad at spelling. Nothing we can do about it, Lily Matisse said. Don't be so sure, Leon said. He was glancing around the corner at Miss Hagmire. She was back to grading papers. Do you think we can isolate P.W.'s quiz? Leon asked Lily Matisse. What do you mean? Can you sweet talk the hag and separate P.W.'s spelling test from the rest of the pile? Why? Don't ask why, said Leon. Just tell me yes or no. Do you think you can do it for P.W.? I guess I could give it a shot. Lily Matisse approached the teacher's bench before she had a chance to get scared. Leon couldn't hear what she said to Miss Hagmire, but he knew it concerned sewing because Miss Hagmire put down her grading and reached for the instructional needle in her satchel. She was soon waving the needle in the air like a conductor handling a baton. And as Miss Hagmire ran through her piece, Leon could tell it was part of her st standard repertoire, Stitches of Virtue, Variation Number 6, The Overcast, Lily Matisse started nodding as if she had a nervous tick. What's she doing? Leon wondered. Lily Matisse continued to nod and Leon continued to wonder. Eventually, she pointed at the test papers on the ground. Leon understood. He grabbed the arm of the doll and jerked it to the side so Miss Hagmire would smack the quizzes to the ground. Lily Matisse pounced while Leon held the doll and Miss Hagmire in place. She quickly gathered up the papers and placed them in a reorganized pile back on the bench. Leon relaxed his grip on the doll only after Lily Matisse was safely by his side. No wonder the hag went ballistic, she said. PW got a D minus. Did you isolate his paper? asked Leon. Lily Matisse frowned. Wasn't that what I was supposed to do? It's on top of the pile. Nice work, Leon said. Whatever you're planning, do it fast. The hag will re-alphabetize as soon as she sees the order is messed up. She won't while I have my little friend, said Leon. He aimed the masterpiece at the teacher's bench and started working the limbs. Miss Hagmire snapped into action. With one hand, she reached for the quiz that topped the newly ordered stack. With the other, she removed the marking pencil tucked into her wig. Oh my gosh, Lily Matisse blurted out. You're not going to... Shh, said Leon. It took some doing, but eventually he managed to guide the marking pencil to a spot just inches above the D minus. The grade was a cinch to spot. Miss Hagmire had circled it twice and underlined it for good measure. Leon forced Miss Hagmire to lower her pencil to the surface of PW's quiz. Then, with a single downward stroke, he upped his friend's grade from a D minus to a D plus. It wasn't a big improvement, but it would have to do. Telekinetic grade tampering demanded a lot more agility than doing a pull up or a weight yank, since it required the use of a tool. Unfortunately, P.W.'s good fortune didn't last. 
As soon as Leon let go of the doll, Miss Hagmeyer erased the downstroke. The D plus was a D minus once more. Doesn't look like your nimble fingers are going to change her mind, said Lily Matisse. We'll see about that, Leon said defiantly. He downstroked the hand of the doll a second time, forcing Miss Hagmeyer to re, re revise PW's grade. The D minus went back up to a D plus. Amazing, said Lily Matisse as her eyes ping pong between doll and teacher, but she spoke too soon. Miss Hagmeyer re re revised the grade to a D minus. So began a curious display of hand to hand combat in which the hands of the two combatants never actually touched. D plus, D minus, D plus, D minus, D plus, D minus, and then disaster struck. Leon made his fifth, or was it his sixth downstroke, and waited for the minus sign to turn into a plus. Yet for some reason, Miss Hagmeyer did not respond. He tried again and waited. The grade remained unchanged. Miss Hagmeyer refused to budge. Get closer, Lily Matisse advised. Leon moved in and flicked the arm of the doll, still to no effect. Miss Hagmeyer had clearly regained control of her body. Within seconds, she was realphabetizing the quizzes. Try the legs, said Lily Matisse. Leon moved one leg of the doll, then the other. I've lost control, he cried. I've lost control. Miss Hagmeyer abruptly turned toward them. Be quiet, Lily Matisse said in an urgent whisper. She'll hear you. For the remainder of recess, Leon flexed the limbs of his masterpiece, hoping to revive the magic, but he couldn't. The doll was powerless, and so, it appeared, was Leon. That's where we're going to leave it for today. So tomorrow, we will find out if Leon gets his powers back. See you guys then.